thousands of years, the Nile River has been a symbol of life, abundance, and civilization. From it was born ancient Egypt, one of the most powerful empires in history. But in the 21st century, this same river, the longest in the world, has become the stage for one of the greatest geopolitical confrontations of our time. At the heart of this conflict is a gigantic concrete wall built on Ethiopian territory, a project that many consider a milestone of national sovereignty, while others see it as an existential risk. This is the scenario surrounding the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, also known as Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, a mega structure that aims to control the flow of the Blue Nile, the source of more than 80% of the water that flows to Egypt. But after all, how can a single engineering project spark so much hope and at the same time so much tension? How can the construction of a power plant be seen as a military threat? And most importantly, what is happening now with this mega dam? It's already finished. What are the impacts for Africa and, and for the world? The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is located in the west of the country, in the Marishangugumus region, about 30 kilometers from the border with Sudan. This location was not chosen by chance. It is precisely at this point that the Blue Nile, which accounts for 80% of the total volume of the Nile River, enters Sudanese territory. In other words, controlling this flow, their means in practice directly influencing what reaches Egypt and Sudan. And it is in this mountainous and rocky region that the ideal terrain for the type of structure required by the project was found. This location allows for a monumental construction with a retention capacity never before seen in Africa. The dam stretches for 1.8 kilometers in width with a height of 145 meters, which makes it almost twice as tall as the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Behind this concrete wall is where a colossal reservoir is formed. With the capacity to store an impressive 74 billion cubic meters of water, enough to submerge the entire city of New York under a 14 meter deep layer of water. That's right, we're talking about a volume of water comparable to Lake Balaton, the largest in Central Europe. The foundation of the dam was excavated deep into the bedrock of the Blue Nile. To make construction possible, the river had to be temporarily diverted, a technique similar to the one used in the construction of the famous Hoover Dam in the United States on the Colorado River. The main structure is complemented by auxiliary dams, saddle dams, spillways, and two large powerhouses. The project, um, which includes 13 turbines, is responsible for housing the turbines that convert water pressure into electricity. This will give the plant an installed capacity exceeding 5,000 megawatts. In other words, that's double Ethiopia's current total energy capacity, which is around 2,400 megawatts. This shows the project's grandeur. It is already the largest hydroelectric plant on the African continent and one of the 20 largest in the world in terms of energy generation. And the expectation is that the country will become a hub for electricity exports, benefiting neighbors like Sudan, Djibouti, Kenya, and even Egypt if agreements are reached. But why has this project been causing so much conflict with its neighboring countries? Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam's construction has revived a centuries-old dispute over control of the Nile River, a clash that involves sovereignty, survival, and regional balance among three central nations, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. In 1959, Egypt and Sudan signed a treaty splitting the Nile between them. Egypt got about 66% of the flow, and Sudan got 22% and absolutely nothing was reserved for the upstream countries, including Ethiopia itself, where most of the water comes from. This exclusion fueled resentment and reinforced the view that Ethiopia has always been seen as a secondary player regarding this resource. Nope. Ethiopia, and it involves sovereignty, survival, and central balance. Ethiopia, a conflict that involves sovereignty and central balance. Ethiopia, 
a conflict that involves sovereignty and survival among three central nations, Ethiopia, Sudan, and it involves sovereignty, survival, and regional balance. Central Ethiopians and Egypt took the case to the United Nations and warned that all options are on the table, including military action. Rumors of airstrikes on the dam have circulated since 2021 and 2023. Ethiopia, on the other hand, refuses to sign agreements that impose fixed limits on water release, claiming that this would harm its sovereignty. But a study published in the journal Nature in 2024 brought an important setback. If the operation is conducted with transparency and regional coordination, the impact on the flow of the Nile River can be minimal, even during periods of drought. In other words, the deadlock is not just technical, but also political and diplomatic. Even so, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has become a symbol of a new Ethiopia, more independent, ambitious, and determined to control its own destiny. While Egypt sees it as a possible threat to its water survival, the outcome of this dispute remains uncertain. And what's at stake is not just a river, but the future of hundreds of thousands of people who depend on it. Within Ethiopia, the narrative is entirely different. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is seen as a watershed, both literally and symbolically, towards the country's development and energy sovereignty. Over 69 million Ethiopians still lack regular electricity access. Even in the cities, power outages of up to 12 hours are common. And in some rural areas, darkness is constant. This affects industry, education, and even health with vaccines lost due to lack of refrigeration and food wasted before reaching the market. With the dam coming into operation, Ethiopia will have enough energy to double its electricity supply and still generate surplus for export. This leap could turn the country into a regional energy hub, strengthening its economy and political influence. The project also created thousands of direct and indirect jobs boosted the construction industry, and trained a generation of local engineers and technicians, and the most symbolic. The project was mostly financed with internal resources, through fundraising campaigns and government bonds, without relying on loans from the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank. This created a strong sense of national pride, with the population feeling that every block of concrete is part of the collective effort of a nation that decided to be self-sustaining. The Nile is more than a river. It is a vital vein of Northeast Africa. Stretching over 6,600 kilometers, it passes through 11 countries before reaching the Mediterranean. But for Egypt, it means everything. It is the main and almost only source of fresh water in the country. Although Egypt's territory is over 1 million square kilometers, only 3% is habitable. Nearly all the population lives along the Nile's banks. Today, with more than 116 million inhabitants, the dependence is extreme. 97% of the water consumed in Egypt comes from the Nile. This water feeds crops, industries, and entire cities. Therefore, any decrease in flow directly threatens national sovereignty. With the rapid population growth, the scarcity has worsened. Egypt has already officially experienced a state of severe water scarcity. With only 570 cubic meters of water per person per year, far below the 1,000 cubic meter limit set by the United Nations, the impact is visible. Farmers use outdated techniques and lose productivity. The country imports a large part of the food it consumes, and urban outskirts suffer from unequal access to water. The irony is clear. The river that sustains Egypt originates in another country, Ethiopia, which is responsible for 80 to 85% of the Nile's volume. And it is precisely this dependence that is now being put to the test by the dam. Multiple negotiation rounds have attempted to reach an agreement, but none succeeded. Meanwhile, Ethiopia continues to fill the reservoir in stages keeping Cairo on permanent alert. Despite diplomatic tensions, the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is practically complete. 
the reservoir started filling in 2020? According to Prime Minister Abi Ahmed, the full inauguration should happen by the end of 2025. Although the project was financed internally, it received technical support and equipment from China. It also attracted the interest of Gulf countries and the European Union because of the potential stability it represents. Today, satellite images show a gigantic body of water where there used to be a dry valley. Both powerhouses are already equipped with state-of-the-art Francis turbines, and the filling process is advancing in a controlled manner, ensuring structural safety and water balance. The foundation, anchored in the rocky bed, was designed to withstand earthquakes and ensure durability for over a century. With some of the turbines already partially operational since 2024, the expectation is that all of them will be active by the end of 2025. Once completed, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will not only be the largest dam in Africa, it will be a symbol of energy independence and African technical mastery. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is more than just a concrete structure on the banks of the Blue Nile. It's a portrait of a country that turns scarcity into power. With its own resources and national determination, Ethiopia built one of the largest infrastructure projects of the 21st century, defying predictions, political disputes, and economic limitations. There are still diplomatic challenges ahead, but from an engineering standpoint, the mission is accomplished. To generate clean energy, boost development, and inspire other African nations to invest in sustainable long-term solutions. In the heart of the Horn of Africa, the GERD sends a clear and powerful message. Development is possible when there is will, vision, and well done work. Thank you for watching this video until the end. What, what do you think about this great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam? Is its construction really viable, holding back the flow of the Nile River and bringing consequences to other countries? Or do you think it shouldn't be built? Leave your opinion in the comments below. I'll read all of them. I'll stop here. A big hug and see you in the next video.